beginning, um, for those of you who are a little less familiar with Center, just a little bit of background information about us. Uh, we are about a student body of about 1,400 students. That's a really nice size for us. It's definitely the type of place where you are not going to be best friends with everyone. You know, that typical small school stereotype that, oh yeah, you know everyone and, um, you know, they know you and everyone's up in each other's business. But there is a really wonderful sense of community that comes when you know, uh, at least in passing, a person you've had class with or a person who sat next to you in the dining hall. Um, there's a sense of community and camaraderie that comes along with a size institution like that. Another one of those benefits is that you're in a small classroom environment. For those of you who are looking at schools like Center uh, in that liberal arts and sciences realm, this might be something that you are specifically looking for. You're looking for a classroom environment that is very intentional in terms of student access to professors, making sure that those professors are experts in their field, and also making sure that it's a dynamic learning environment. We are not the type of school that aspires to have giant lecture halls of 500 people where you're just a number and you're getting talked at and then you leave to go figure out your education by yourself. We're a very hands-on experience uh, and it's one that really gets your brain moving. Um, in terms of our student body itself, these are just a few demographic pieces um, about how those 1400 students sort themselves out. We have roughly 50-50 gender identity balance between folks who identify as male and as female. This is very uncommon in liberal arts colleges these days. Um, we're seeing many more students who are identifying as female, but we think that having that balance is important to provide perspective um, and also to add to the diversity of our campus experiences. Nearly a quarter of students identify as students of color with another 6% of students coming to our campus from abroad. So this is not only uh, a standout among liberal arts colleges, but we want our student body to look like the world that our students are going to be entering. And this is just one way that we're able to do that. Very importantly though, uh, and this is something that I would hope that you are looking forward to if you're looking at a place like Center, is that we are a highly residential experience. 98% of Center students live on campus in college owned and managed housing. Unless you have a family or medical exception, you're going to be on campus all four years. So the sense of community that develops among this group of people in this place is really profound. Um, and you can expect that you are going to be running into people and building some really high quality long term relationships. Center is located, though, and this is the crux of our program uh, in not your state. Uh, it is located in Danville, Kentucky. Uh, Danville is a small city of about 20,000 located right in central Kentucky. We were not creatively named for some person named Center. Um, we were named because we are literally in the middle of Kentucky. Um, we're about 35 minutes from the south side of Lexington. We're about an hour and a half from Louisville. So for folks who are looking to have larger cities nearby-ish, we've got that. Um, but if you are looking for a super duper urban experience where you walk out of your dorm room and you are in an urban center, we're not going to be the right fit for you. Danville is a thriving small town. We're a top 10 college town in the South. There is a wonderful sense of community within this place itself, besides the fact that center is a place that's really rich in community. Uh, we have consistently been ranked the most beautiful small town in Kentucky, the most charming town in Kentucky. Um, a little bit Norman Rockwell-esque, right? We are really proud um, that this place is so wonderful and welcoming and that the best college in Kentucky is located right here. You know, we are about three blocks from the central part of downtown Danville and there are plentiful opportunities for you to invest and engage in this place. I know coming from suburban Philadelphia, um, I didn't really have a point of reference for what it was like to go to school in a small town, but I found it to be a really welcoming, comfortable place. Um, one that didn't seem to have a really great sense of rush, which is something I was really familiar with. But I think for folks who are also looking at center from places like Danville or even smaller, you're going to find something that's really familiar. Um, Kentucky is a place uh, that blends the best of the Southeast and the Midwest as a state. And there aren't many places that do a really good job of taking the best of two very distinct regions and putting it in one thing. But 
Center does that same exact thing where that sense of hospitality and friendliness and family atmosphere that you often expect from the Southeast is kind of moderated by the genuineness and groundedness of a more Midwest culture. So I think that having both is really awesome. Um, I would say we are going to be the right fit for some students and not for others. Like I said, if you're looking for that super city-based experience, center might not be the fit for you. But also if you're looking for a really rural experience, there are some really great uh, liberal arts colleges that are kind of like center that are in the middle of nowhere. Um, we are not that. So <laughs> if you're looking for something super duper remote, um, I, thank you for tuning in tonight. No, um, but center has some really, really quality perks. Um, and Danville and Kentucky are core to that. Um, so I'm going to pass things over um, to Adriana. And in this course of unmuting, I just wanna point out some of these accolades that Center often gets. These are things that are available to Center students, um, regardless of, you know, in spite of it being in Danville, um, because of it being in Danville, we are a national leader in study abroad. We're a well-endowed school. Our students complete internships all over the place. Um, it's a really exciting place to be, and students are really grateful for the opportunity to live and learn here. Um, and I take it back, I'm not passing it over to Adriana, I'm passing it over to Lauren um, <laughs> to talk a little bit about the center experience. Yes, and so again, we'll just kind of be talking about what it is to come out of state and far away to come to center. So we're just gonna kind of brush on some of the topics. But um, like Thomas said, 98% of our students do live on campus all four years. I would say that's something that really made center different from other schools I was looking at. Um, I kind of looked at big, medium, small, um, knew by the end of my college search I wanted to be the small liberal arts college, but I love that a center um, that our students live on campus all four years, that senior year you're not moving off campus, you're there, you're invested. Um, our residence halls are, they get nicer and bigger each year. So freshman year, you typically share a room in a residential hall with a resident assistant. We call them RAs, but they really help with forming community. Um, they have fun hall events where you get to know everyone. Um, and they just really, for me, it was really great to have an upperclassman just a couple of doors down from me who could help me pick my classes, help me find a building. There's not that many buildings on campus, but just in case I was lost, I get lost easily. Um, it was just nice to have someone who was so close by who was a mentor to me in our hall. And so that was something that I really enjoyed. Um, and then as a senior and junior, there are apartment options on campus, townhomes. There's a lot of different options for more space. You can see on that right picture, and um, that's our Brockman Commons, which are townhomes on campus for our senior students. They have fire pits, hangout spaces. So. Um, What's nice as a senior especially is that I felt like I was still making friends and still invested even through my senior year. But I think it's something that's unique about a small residential community. Um, and I do say that center does feel like a family when you're a student and you'll get to hear from some of our current students after this um, and they'll be able to tell you much more um, about this. But when you're here at center, what's nice is that you walk around and always see a friendly face. And that was something I took for granted while a center student. Um, once I got to graduate school and walked around and wouldn't see a friendly face often, that was something I really missed. Um, but it's really hard to feel missing at center. You know, you're in the mix of everything. It's really easy to feel known and feel cared for. Um, one of my favorite parts of campus is our dining hall. I do love to eat, but it's not just because of the eating. Um, it's just because it kind of feels like family dinner every night. Um, all of our students eat in the dining hall. Um, we would sit for hours. We call it Cowan sitting, but you sit with your friends and talk about different issues and events and things that you care about. Um, and it's just, it does feel like a really big community in that way. And so I think that's just a good example. But um, yeah, warm is the word that I always think of when I think of center. Um, it's just a really, it's just a really nice place to grow and become who you're supposed to be. And having that residential, vibrant, warm experience is something that I think is something that's so enjoyable for our undergrads. So yeah, I think I'm ready for the next slide. Perfect. And so just talking more about, okay, what is there to do on this campus? You know, you talked about that you're going to be there all the time. Um, one of my biggest fears going into college, which was probably not, <laughs> shouldn't have been that big of a fear, but I was very worried about getting bored in college. Um, I always like to have something to do or just to know that I could go do something. Um, and so at Center, there's over 2,000 campus events a year, and there's always something going on on campus. And so that was something I loved as a student, that there was just, you know, shows and plays and athletic events and clubs meetings and community service opportunities like I felt like there was always something for me to go and pursue and um, we do have over 90 clubs on campus and they range from things like 
religious life, community service, Greek life, um, diversity and inclusion, our popular outdoors club. Um, there's a club that goes to the Humane Society to play with puppies. Like there's just so many different ones and they're adding new ones every year. And that's something that's really exciting to see in our campus culture um, and just the ways that we can become even a better community. And so if you feel like we're missing a club, you can always start one with one of your friends. Um, I didn't do that, but I just feel like there are so many to choose from and it's exciting, especially during our expo every fall to see the new clubs and the new things that are growing at center. We have a day during the first week of class called expo where all of our clubs and organizations will set up on one of our big streets on campus and you can go as a first year student or as an upperclassman and sign up for all the clubs that you want to hear more about. Um, and what I love too, again, about the dining hall is that we advertise all of our campus events um, by hanging bed sheets or sheets of paper called Cowan banners all around the balcony of our dining hall. Um, and it's just so nice. And so I just felt very welcomed and included in that because everyone's invited to those campus events. It's not just one group or one set of people, but everyone's invited to what's going on. So always super fun. And um, athletics is a big part of our school culture. We are division three for athletics. About 40% of our students are athletes. Always fun to go catch a game or an event or athletic game that's going on. And um, we're also known for the arts. So you can see glass blowing on the right. I talked a little bit about some of the shows and plays that we have on campus, but the Norton Center has Broadway shows, plays, events. It was home to two vice presidential debates. Um, and then our arts center on campus is also home to a ton of different art classes. So Something always fun going on, um, the word warm, and this is kind of, to me, things I think of vibrant. It's just a really, and especially during COVID, and um, we talked a little bit, I saw a question about COVID, about what our semester's been like. Um, we did have eight, we had 85% of our students that were here this fall on campus, and we did have a strict social contract, so things were different for our students on campus, wearing masks and social distancing. Um, and our students will talk more about this, but I was impressed by the amount of still fun events that we had on campus and um, they had like ice skating in our gym on campus and they had a zip line on one of the fields they had um axe throwing <laughs> one night on campus so even amidst the pandemic i mean center did as much as possible to still keep this place as vibrant and fun and so um thank you for asking that and being engaged on that too so thanks i'll pass it to adriana next thank you <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Um, you know, thinking about community, I feel like one thing that was somewhat unexpectedly meaningful for me as an out-of-state student really was the role that professors play within the center community. Um, I think for a lot of students, you know, you're far away from home, you're really looking for a support system. In a lot of ways, you're getting that from fellow students, you're getting that from um, the RAs that that Lauren mentioned, but it's also really great to just have like an adult in your life that's also looking out for you. And I feel like professors do such a good job of not just being your teacher, but also playing that advisor role and that mentor role. Um, I also really appreciated how professors at Center really do see their role as not just teaching students and not just having students learn from them, but also being at academics who are willing to learn alongside their students. Um, I think our professors do a really good job of using Kentucky and using our surrounding area as an extension of the traditional classroom. And for me, that was also something that was really special, right? I grew up in Los Angeles. I was used to kind of city living. I came to Kentucky and I wanted to explore. I came to Kentucky because I was a student that wanted to be adventurous and wanted to explore new things and who loved learning. And so being in a classroom that allowed me to do both of those things was really exciting. You know, if you're a student who is really interested in something like biology or environmental studies, your professors will likely take advantage of the really beautiful kind of natural spaces that surround us. Um, but even if you're a student like me, you know, I was a sociology major um, taking courses on lots of different things. And I remember taking an education course and my professor had a community-based learning component where we did service in the local school systems. And so integrating the surrounding area and getting to know Kentucky and kind of the great things that Kentucky has to offer and the richness of 
of Kentucky's unique culture, I think is something that professors really do well. Um, another thing that I also really appreciate about uh, professors though, is they're always thinking about how the work that you do within the classroom and the knowledge that you gain from their coursework can really be used for good. I think our professors are constantly thinking about how students and professors can really use knowledge to move the world forward. And so you do also get this really great kind of broad perspective um, that maybe you wouldn't find anywhere else. And it's also preparing you, I think when you have those kind of um, community connections, preparing students for the kind of work that they'll do once they leave center, um, always prepared as students to take kind of this academic intellectual information that you get and being able to couch that um, within whatever context that you find yourself in. Um, and then, you know, when I think about kind of the perspective that we have at center, and this kind of goes along with that kind of change making mindset that I think professors have. Um, I always think of center as a place that is very much rooted in Kentucky. I think we have a very long history, um, very positive history in Kentucky. There are a lot of influential folks from Kentucky um, who went to center and who got their education here, um, but we're also deeply connected to the world. Um, a lot of that is done through study abroad. A lot of that is done through this emphasis on global citizenship. Um, I think that the center classroom itself um, is a place where students are asked to think about the world beyond themselves. Um, they're asked to think critically about problems that the world is facing, whether it's within um, the context of your major, but also you're also challenged to think about connecting problems kind of across majors and across disciplines um, and having this really global perspective I think is one of the ways that students are able to solve problems creatively in a way that's really compelling in a way that really prepares them um, for the kind of lives that we want them to lead once they leave center. Um, I think for us we're conscious of the fact that we want our education to prepare students to what our past president used to say um, our citizen leaders in a global world that they'll inherit. And so giving students this opportunity to explore other cultures abroad, to really immerse themselves and do really great studying, but also to bring that perspective back to Danville um, is one that we really appreciate. And I think one that out-of-state students also really appreciate. You know, we love being in Kentucky. I think Kentucky is such a part of who we are, but we also are conscious of seeing ourselves outside of that and seeing the ways in which Kentucky and our students play a role in this kind of much larger global landscape um, that we certainly work in, um, but certainly students within your generation will definitely work in as the world gets more and more global. Um, that's enough from kind of us. I know that you all are probably itching um, to hear from some current students. So we will stop our screen share um, and we'll have our current center students um, turn their cameras on. Um, um, if you can. Um, but I guess to start, um, for students, if you do have any questions, I know some folks have already started this, please feel free to put those in the chat. We want your questions to be answered. So feel free to put those in the chat and we'll try to have some students answer those. Um, but to start off, if I can have um, our current center students introduce themselves, um, maybe give us an idea of your name, hometown, maybe what high school you went to, what year you are at center, and then if you've declared a major, what major you've declared or maybe are thinking about um, declaring. Um, so I'll start off with Luke if you can. Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Luke Martin. I'm a senior at center from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and I went to Spartanburg High School here. Um, I can say here because I'm home now. <laughs> um, and at center, I am a biology and environmental studies double major, uh, but I'm also on the pre-med track. So uh, my plan is to go to medical school next year. Thanks, Luke. Sarah? Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Matthews. Um, I'm a sophomore at center, and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and in Nashville, I went to Hume Fogg High School. 
Um, and I have not declared a major yet because we declare at the end of our sophomore year, but I am intending to major in environmental studies and anthropology sociology with a minor in Spanish. That's awesome. Thanks, Sarah. And then last but certainly not least, Dan. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Dan Santo Domingo. I am um, a sophomore and I am from downtown Los Angeles, California. And then um, high school, I went to downtown Magnets High School and um, I intend to ma double major in history and politics. Thanks, you all. Um, I'm seeing a few questions in the chat, but I think I might start off with a more general question and then dive into some of these more specific questions after that. Um, so I guess to start, you know, we spent a good amount of time talking about Danville and kind of describing Danville and what Danville is like. I'm curious if really quickly, um, maybe Dan and Luke, if you all can tell us kind of your favorite thing about Danville. Maybe it's a place, maybe it's a quality, um, but what would you say is your favorite thing about Danville or maybe Kentucky broadly? Um, Luke, maybe you can start us off. Sure. Um, so I, there are so many, uh, you know, things that bring merit to Danville in Kentucky, especially as an out-of-stater coming in. You know, I didn't really know what to expect. I had an aunt from Kentucky, but I hadn't been to the state that, mu that frequently. Um, and one of, one of the pleasant surprises to me, uh, and this will make sense since I'm a biology and environmental studies double major, uh, was just the natural beauty of the state. Um, so Danville is very well situated uh, where you have the, you know, rolling hills of bluegrass, but you also have the knobs nearby, which knobs are kind of like forested, um, kind of steep landscapes. Uh, so you have multiple different places where you can go hiking. Um, in the surrounding city. And as a biology major, you, we actually do a lot of like ecological field research work in these same places. So there's the Central Kentucky Wildlife Refuge, which is about 30 minutes away. Um, Shaker Village, which is the very interesting historical site, uh, also about 20 minutes away from Center's campus. So we have a lot to offer in terms of like natural areas around the, the community of Danville. Thanks. Dan, anything you would add? Yeah, so my story is kind of on the same boat as Adriana because we, I am, we're both from Los Angeles. So I'm kind of used to the idea of like waking up to the sirens and the loud um, cars honking at each other every time. But I think that's the appeal that Danville gave that, that I had with Danville because it was such a serene place waking up. It's, it's waking up to birds and squirrels just like running around. <laughs> um, it's also like what Luke said, it's a green place. Another another part is, um, I am I'm a big history junkie, so um, Danville itself is extremely historical. There's there's there are different markers that um, around around the community, and then I remember there's a Bell um, there's a Bellevue Cemetery there that I actually wrote my biography on. I found him there, and we have um, an American Revolutionary hero in in Danville, Kentucky, who lived in Danville, Kentucky. I think that's what I love about that place. It's like, it's beautiful. The community is vibrant. The sceneries, are, is, the sceneries are beautiful. Also, it's a very historically rich place. Thanks. And then I have one more kind of general question for Sarah. Um, I know you are involved with residence life on campus. And I know other, our other panelists are as well. Um, but, you know, I think one thing for me that was really scary about being out of state was like, I didn't know anybody. Nobody from my school went to center. I wanted to go to this place that was community oriented, but like, how was I going to find that community? And I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about how community building works at Center, um, whether it's through residence life, but maybe also other ways that students find community. Sure. Um, so yeah, I think uh, residence life plays a really big part in community building at Center, especially for first year students. Um, it's a really great opportunity for people to find a community right off the bat. Um, and so, you know, our residential halls and communities have a lot of programs where students can get involved and engage with one another. Um, but we also have a lot beyond that as well, a big part of what helped me acclimate um, to college life at the center specifically uh, was orientation at the beginning of my first year. And that's 
you know, a really good time. It's very intentional for first year students before classes begin um, for them to, you know, meet one another and get acclimated to the campus and understand kind of what is coming um, before they're thrown into all the craziness of everything. Um, so I think those two things for, for first year students specifically are a really big part of it. And then it just continues um, beyond that first year experience as well. Thanks, Sarah. That was great. I love that question. And uh, sorry to jump in, but one question I'd be interested in, maybe Dan and Luke could answer this. Um, but just, I know something I worried about, you know, I came 16 hours away to come to center. That was quite a big commitment. <laughs> and again, like Adra said, I didn't know anyone either. And um, my first year, I mean, it's pretty pivotal. Like your freshman year is, it's a big deal. And so I think it'd be really interesting to hear about y'all's first year and kind of what that was like. How did you make friends? When did you feel like okay, this is my home, like, what did that look like for you? And uh, maybe Luke, if you could start us off. Sure, uh, that's a great question. And, and definitely something that like an out of stater comes in, you know, thinking very heavily on. Um, I kind of had an advantage, I think, when I was coming in uh, as a first year, because I had kind of two communities that I was coming in as a part of. And one was the Brown Fellowship Program. Um, so the Brown Fellowship is, is a scholarship at Center. There are 10 scholars per year at Center and then 10 per year at, at the University of Louisville. So I came in with a cohort of 10 people that I had met the summer before my first year. And so I came in with them already as, as a, a kind of a solid group of friends. Um, but then I was also on the swim team at, I, and, and still am on the swim team at Center. Um, and so I came in and you get to know, you know, sports and athletics and it's the same thing with greek life and other student organizations it's a great way to get to know not only people in your own class but also people who are older than you um so i establish a, a lot of close friendships with my teammates uh on this swim team uh as well as that close group of friends that i had come to, as a brown fellow um and i know you know like i said i was at an advantage because i had those groups but i know that it's so easy for everyone at center to come in and quickly become a part of a group, whether that's um, through activities expo, which I, I can't remember who was mentioning that, but one of y'all mentioned, uh, you know, becoming a part of a student organization, getting plugged into campus as early as possible. Um, or, you know, I think 50% of our students are athletes. So they'll come in as part of a sports team and they'll kind of have that, you know, their teammates become their friends and, men and, and peer mentors, you know, um, it's just very easy to find those groups and find your niche quickly as you come to center as a first year from out of state. Thank you. Dan, if you want to tell us a little bit next. Yes, I also um, had a little bit of an advantage coming into center because I am part of the Grissom Scholarship Program on center. So we're a group of first generation college students all around the, all around the country. And then we have 10 people per cohort. So I'm part of the fifth um, the fifth cohort for the program. And aside from my cohort, I think there's this larger <laughs> family. There's like 40 of us on in total. And then we have this one, um, we have Sarah Scott as our director. We actually call her Mama Scott because it's like the, um, it's a familiar feeling to it. And I think that's my, that's my experience of like making friends because I already have a, a set I already have a consistent group of people that I can actually call my family and friends. Um, so, but one thing, and now I'm imagining myself, if I didn't have, um, if I didn't have Grissom with me, I, I don't think I would have had, the, I would have, ha I would have difficulty of course, but I think I would have found my posse eventually um, because for our program specifically, even though we're called the Grissom Scholars, it's not exclusively for us. Like you can hang out with us, you can, you can bond with us, you can help with us. And then as soon as you, found, you find um, your or different organizations during Expo, as mentioned before, those people will be your posse as well. So I think that's what I love about Center is this, that even though it's small, but it's that just lends itself to finding easier group of people that you can actually have your bond with. That's great. Thank you guys so much. Um, and just tossing it back to Sarah too, just thinking about, I know you shared a little bit about your residence life experience too, but thinking about your first year, um, I know you're involved in a lot of things on campus. So how, like we talked about Expo, but were you involved as a freshman? Were you able to actually do things on campus as a first year? How did you kind of find your own on campus? 
Sure. Um, yeah. So I, um, I kind of did the typical center student um, thing at the beginning of my first year and got a little bit over involved um, because, you know, it's really exciting going to expo at the beginning of the year. And, you know, in a normal circumstance, we have tables lining the street and you walk up and down and see all the clubs and organizations on campus. Um, and so, you know, you sign your name on the email list and all of a sudden you're a part of 20 different clubs. And so um, it's really, really easy to get involved. Um, but then the really nice thing about it is that you can kind of um, cater that to your own availability and your own schedule. A lot of organizations have varying levels of um, engagement. And so I got involved with a lot um, and I've tried to stick with most of it um, through my sophomore year. And so I'm, I'm really lucky to be a part of a whole bunch of different organizations on campus um, that represent a lot of different interests. Um, and there's tons more beyond what I do as well. So, yeah. I have a question for folks. Um, sorry to jump back in here. I've been feverishly trying to answer questions in the chat. So if we don't get to stuff, um, feel free to email any one of the counselors here, me, Lauren, or Adriana. We will connect you with the right people and the right information. But I'm writing down some questions that you all might have some answers to. Um, Luke, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the pre-med program, um, the quality of centers pre-med program, um, and to just throw some happy little factoids out there. We have the highest pre-med acceptance rate in Kentucky. We have a really rigorous pre-med program itself um, that allows you to major in whatever you want. Um, but I wonder if you could talk about both the program and the preparation within that program. Um, you know, how did you prepare for the MCAT? Um, what, what did that look like for you? Absolutely. Yeah. And this is something that's very relevant to me because I've been getting letters and, you know, interviews and stuff like that right now. So um, uh, the pre-med program at Center, like Thomas mentioned, uh, it's not it's not like Center has a, a pre-med major. So uh, basically it's kind of it's a support system headed by uh, a couple of faculty members. There's Dr. Palmy, who's an organic chemistry professor. She's kind of over the umbrella, you know, term pre-med. Um, but that includes like pre-dental, pre-veterinary, uh, pre-physical therapy, pre-ophthalmology. I think, you know, there, there are multiple different like professional schools that you can choose within medicine. Um, and so each of those different types of, of school um, has a particular advisor kind of under Dr. Palmy. Uh, but since I'm, I was pursuing medical school, Dr. Palmy was my main advisor. And so... Uh, Dr. Palmy and, and their group of advisors, as well as older students who are going through the same you know, process, uh, are a great support system in, in thinking about you know, what classes do I need to be taking as a, as a sophomore? You know, when do I need to be taking my two semesters of organic chemistry or my one semester of biochemistry? Um, you know, with my you know, biology and environmental studies faculty members, uh, or advisors, but I met just as much with Dr. Palmy uh, as my pre-medical advisor. Um, and so that, that support is, and guidance is incredibly valuable, as well as the guidance about, you know, when do I need to start my application? Who's going to read my personal statement? Who's going to write my letters of recommendation? At Center, uh, Dr. Palmy would compile a, uh, a committee letter of recommendation for us. So we submitted, you know, six faculty members that, I, I think six, six or seven faculty members that we were comfortable with submitting uh, a letter of recommendation on our behalf or a letter of evaluation on our behalf. And she is the one that compiles them and kind of consolidates them all into one committee letter. Um, and so you have her, you know, helping you out with the, the actual AMCAS application process. Um, but something that cannot be understated, uh, at least from my perspective, is just how encouraging Dr. Palmy is as a professor and as an individual. So I have actually a very close relationship with Dr. Palmy. Um, I, went, I studied organic chemistry with her for a semester. Uh, and she also led a study abroad course with Dr. Workman, another organic chemistry prof professor and the former pre-med advisor. Uh, they lead a study abroad course on vol volcanology in New Zealand, which is very outside of you know, what they usually teach with organic chemistry but something that they're both very passionate about. And I will never forget, you know, on one of our kind of off days in that course, 
uh, everyone in, in our class decided to go whitewater rafting. And Dr. Palmy thought, what the heck, I'll go with them. And so I literally was rafting, whitewater rafting with Dr. Palmy uh, down like, you know, some of the highest grade whitewater rapids in, at least in New Zealand, maybe the world. But Dr. Palmy got knocked out of our boat and I was literally grabbing her up by the life jacket and, and pulling her in there. So I, I know that's kind of a, an unrelated story, but she is the pre-med advisor at Center. And like, that was just kind of this like very, you know, that's an experience that bonds you. And, you know, I got closer and closer with her over the course of that New Zealand course. Um, and so she was one there as this wonderfully encouraging presence, a very helpful presence. Uh, but also when it came time to think about who I wanted writing my recommendation letters, you know, she knew me at, as, at both the academic level as how I was as a student, but also how I am as an individual and what my personality is like. And, you know, the kind of intangible things that it, it might be hard to to write about on in a letter of evaluation. So um, that's kind of the support system that Center has offered me as a pre-medical student. In terms of thinking about the MCAT, you know, you're offered that guidance about when you should be taking the MCAT, when you need to be registering for it. Um, and I noticed one of the questions was, you know, uh, MCAT prep or like, um, let's see, or are you on your own? Like, is it, does Center offer MCAT prep or are you, are you on your own? Um, you know, Center, it doesn't have like an MCAT class or anything like that, uh, but you do have this support system. Oftentimes people will share, you know, what books are you using to study for the MCAT? You know, is there a, a you know, a, like Kaplan offers a, a certain, you know, course or practice exam, you know, I got to know about a lot of these resources that are available to people in the pre-med track uh, through either Dr. Palmy and pre-med faculty or other pre-med students. So it's overall with both the faculty and the older students who are going through the process before you, it's a great support system um, for pre-medical students at Center. And I can't speak as much to, you know, like pre-law or, um, you know, other pre-professional programs, uh, but I imagine you would find that in those other programs as well. Thank you. Um, and there was a question on here too, a couple questions about um, the politics program here. Um, Dan, if you could chime in, um, or any of you, um, I know I was involved in, in political stuff at Center. Um, I know some of my colleagues were. Um, I wonder if you could speak to what a hands-on experience would look like being involved in politics at Center. Um, I'll start. So I, this is, I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a politics and history major, but when I was specifically starting with politics, um, it's a very robust program. Um, starting with last year during the gubernatorial race in Kentucky, our, our, our very own um, Dr. Noah, I love that man so much, um, conducted, um, conducted a, a, a statewide exit polling and then uh, when did, did it with students. I, I wasn't able to participate because I haven't had Dr. Noel back then um, just yet, but that's the type of thing that you could possibly do um, for, um, for, for the politics program. And even if, and then first for my situation, because my particular area of interest is not necessarily taught or like there's no um, professor who's a special, who has specialty that aligns with mine. Um, my, I want to do like politics of Southeast Asia, but there's not much, there's not a lot of people who actually specialize in that in, in center, but that's where the independent study comes in. So you could definitely do that. You could just have to have your proposal, just make sure you already have your scaffolding ready and you already have a list of readings that you want to do. And then when you approach a professor, it's very much accessible and they'd be like, you just can, you can just tell them that you need a mentor to, you need a supervisor, and then you present them that you've already done, um, prior research already started um, uh, long-term research. And then that's, um, that's the usually is for my policy program. And then all the classes are fun um, because I've had um, Dr. Evan this past, in the fall, and then she taught us civil rights and social movements. And then we learned so much um, about all the social movements in, in a theoretical way at the same time um, in just a social way. And then she's, even though she's new, she's already offered to do independent study if you want, if you're interested with, for example, um, the counter move, um, counter movement slash counter movements or the alternate, um, the alt-right movement. So those are the a wide array of variety that you have in terms of the politics program. 
Thank you. Um, and in terms of specific congressional placements, um, it varies quite a bit from year to year and cycle to cycle. Um, in my memory, we have not had any interns with Senator Paul, but we have had them with Senator McConnell. Um, and then in terms of our, our uh, Congress people, um, we have had people in Congressman Guthrie's office, Congressman Yarmouth's office, uh, Congressman Barr's office. Um, so three out of the six, pretty solid, at least for a regular recent history basis. Um, but we also have folks who are engaged in not Kentucky politics. You know, Center is a place that draws 50% of its students from not Kentucky. Um, so there's a lot of access to, um, you know, we have a study away program in Washington, D.C. that allows you to undertake an internship while also continuing full-time study. And there are folks who will work peop with people from coast to coast and with um, different intergovernmental agencies. And really the opportunities with the politics program are pretty boundless at a place like Center. Um, and we have really well-forged connections for those positions too. So um, if there's something you want to do or something you want to take advantage of, we encourage you to just ask. Um, really, it's as long as you are motivated enough to put in the work on an application, um, there's probably a really high quality position for you. And I know we're coming up on time. I saw Lauren on mute, which is the signal for like, let's wrap, but- That's not it. I had a question. Oh, excuse me. I mean, yes. I like you people too late, but I just, I saw a question in the chat and I wanted to throw it out. No, I have, I, I was gonna pick one from the chat too, but you you go because I want, <laughs> okay. I want Sarah to answer this question. But oh, you, well then you go, you go. So Sarah, one of the questions in the chat, and sorry, Luke and Dan, you get like one word answers after Sarah does. But um, there's a really good question here. That's what is something that you would know about Center? Is this, Lauren, what you were going to say? That you couldn't Google. Something you need to know about Center that you couldn't Google to find out. I was going to add on to this question and just because I know you all likely visited and got to see Center before you chose Center. But for some of our students watching today, visiting is a lot harder right now during a pandemic. And we want to be aware of that and thoughtful of that. So maybe adding on to this question, if you could maybe talk about what you found out about Center after you got there that surprised you in a good way or hopefully not a bad way, but just things that you found out about Center once you got there too that might be helpful to a student who hasn't been able to go to campus as much. So thanks, Thomas. <laughs> All right, Sarah, you're up first. What, what okay. do people need to know that they couldn't Google to find out? This is a great question. I feel like I'm a little bit on the spot. I feel like I could think about it and come up with something really good, but um, I think the first thing that comes to mind kind of goes back to what we talked about before um, is really just the sense of community. Um, like, I think that's something that you can't really define on a Google search, um, but that's something I definitely didn't really understand the depth of until I came to Center either, was just how interconnected all of the students, faculty, and staff are um, on campus, even if you don't know somebody because you won't know everybody on campus. Um, you still, you know, wave to people when you walk by and make eye contact and smile and talk to professors on your way to the dining hall and things like that. Um, and so that's a huge part of the center experience. Um, and I think, you know, coming to campus, that's something that makes it a lot less intimidating is that you don't have to know everybody to be able to, you know, see friendly faces everywhere you go. And as someone who's a little bit um, directionally challenged, I would say, um, coming to campus, I was a little bit intimidated because, you know, I'd been to center before to visit, um, but I still felt like I had no idea where anything was or how to get anywhere. Um, and it took, didn't take me very long. Everything's pretty close together. And I think that was something I learned as well as how close like downtown Danville is. It's very much within walking distance. Um, and so it's a really good way to get engaged and connected with the community as well. All right, Dan, what's your nutshell takeaway? What, what do people need to know about Center that they couldn't Google to find out? Oh, how involved professors are as in their students. Um, I remember we had, like, <laughs> there's just one story that I really love because one, like, Dr. Osan Lu, who was my humanities professor, um, she was like, she was late 10 minutes to class and she was like, oh, since I was late, let me buy y'all donuts the next class. Um, she didn't have any reason why she needed to buy us donuts, but <laughs> she just decided to. And then another part is my, my, uh, my advisor, Dr. Earl, 
he wasn't there um, during orientation. So Dr. Horney stepped in and he was like, oh, since I'm here, here are brownies, have at it. So, the, <laughs> and then it's just easy, like how professors invite you to their houses sometimes to have a cup of coffee or like to have a meal with them. I think you cannot possibly experience that or like find that on the quick Google search. I think it's something that you have to experience that you will experience if you ever decide, if you ever decide to go to center. And then, yeah, I, have, I haven't, I've lost count to like how many times I've gone to office hours to meet my professors to talk about random stuff. It's not even class related anymore, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. You gave some really good ones. All right, Luke, you got something left in the tank? I, I guess so. The, the, the Sarah and Dan brought up community and professors, and those are like two of my like favorite parts about Center. Um, so one of the, the, the kind of last thing that comes to mind for me is like just some of the like informal and formal traditions on Center's campus that you wouldn't necessarily know about. And they can be very specific to certain organizations. Like on the swim team, we have one called Cracker Barrel Practice where, you know, it's the middle of January. We've had two a day practices for like three months. Um, and our coach, we get changed. We're in our speedos ready to go in the morning. And then our coach just comes in and says, all right, y'all can change. We're going to go to Cracker Barrel. And we don't have practice, but we go to Cracker Barrel. And that is like the highlight of our year. Um, I think of, you know, it, during this time of year, you know, the finals traditions that typically happen. And we were still able to do some of them, but not all of them with COVID. Um, we have midnight breakfast, you know, at, at some point during finals, it, uh, final season, which is, you know, everyone's really stressed out. They've been studying all afternoon for their finals. And then Cowan, our, our dining hall reopens and a lot of professors and administrators come in and serve us, you know, coffee, donuts, you know, eggs and bacon, you know, it's mid, late night breakfast just to keep us going during that finals grind. Um, and then I think of um, a new tradition that I'm very excited about with President Moreland's new dog, Blue, uh, who I think is becoming Sinner's unofficial mascot over time. Um, I so it's a lot of these different like small traditions that are, there are truly a countless number of them that you can find all across that you want to be able to find just by, you know, looking us up online. So. Well said. Lauren, Adriana, any, do you think they covered it? Yeah, we've got a good crew. Um, Y'all, I know we are here and we are over time. Um, but I want to thank you all. I want to thank our students for taking time out of their break. I want to thank my colleagues for taking time out of their evening. Um, and we hope you learned a little something about what it might be like to go to center um, from a little further afield. If you have specific questions that we weren't able to answer tonight, we know there were lots of questions, um, please feel free to email any or all of the counselors here. We'd be happy to point you in the right direction for information or to get you to connected to your assigned admission counselor. Um, and the last thing I would say um, that's really important for you to take away from this that you're not going to be able to Google about Center uh, is that we are a place that is filled with gratitude. I remember giving a tour as a student um, and a, a parent pointed that out. And you know, I'm a student giving a tour and she's like, everyone here is really thankful to be here, aren't they? And I thought that really summed up our center story really well. I mean, that, that really underlies these things that you have heard talked about tonight is that you know, we value community, we value relationship, um, and we value the impact that our students are able to have on the world. And that that sense of gratitude that grounds us in recognizing what an awesome privilege we have and what awesome capacity we have to change the world um, is a hallmark of a center education that is a little hard to fit on a postcard. So um, thank you all again for joining us tonight. Hope you have a great rest of your evening. Um, have a wonderful holiday season. Stay well, stay healthy, wear your mask. Um, and we'll hope to see you at center sometime. See your application soon and feel free to be in touch with any questions you might have. Y'all take care. Have a good night.